And when my mother did come home, he said, I think you need to go check on your son. I think I heard him this time. And my mother was, had a three-month-old baby, and was pregnant with another one. Sorry for the ages are a little long, but um, she came to the room and I had welts up and down my ribs and back to my father's fist. So he did what he would do, and get up in front of the grandmothers and hide out for a while. And of course, as time goes on, the man who makes the money in the house, the house is in your, my father's name, it's hard to hide from the man who controls the entire family. Where do you go when the man who makes all the money has all the bank accounts and has the cars and the homes, where do you turn to? You look to your family for support. In this day and age, these hard times of the economics where we are, think about it. If someone showed up at your house and said, will you help raise my three kids and myself? Uh, the spring in Tampa is an amazing place where women can actually have a place to go where they can continue to work where the kids can go to school and kids can have an opportunity, which is all I really wanted coming up. It was just a chance. I said, if I get a chance, I'm going to run with it. And, and I did. And growing up for myself, I looked at my father and I thought, this is the biggest education for me because I don't ever want to be like this man. I don't, I, I, don't, I don't want to have a woman who I hurt like that. How can I tell you I love you every night when we go to bed and cause so much pain as my father did? I don't ever want to have kids that look at me and they're afraid. I don't ever want my son to fear me. For years I stayed by my father's side after he finally left when I was 10 because um, when I was asleep one morning, I woke up at 3.30 in the morning and I heard these horrific screams coming from my mother's room. He had never gone after my mom before, at least as far as I had known, because women aren't amazing. They're so strong and able to hide everything. So, 3.30 in the morning, I hear this loud screaming coming from the back room, and I'm not really sure what's going on, but I could tell it was serious. And I ran back to my mother's room and slammed the door open, and there's this giant man sitting on my mom, and her arms are pinned beneath his legs, and he's just strangling her. Just nothing she could do, choking the life out of her. And I just looked and screamed, I, I just screamed, get off of her, and he did. And my mom says that I saved her life, but I feel like my father always knew the limits. He always knew how far he could throw somebody, how many times he could kick my brother with steel to a boots after work, how many times I could be thrown into the corner because I couldn't spell this incredibly long last French name I had. And um, <clears throat> it was always a struggle for us, as it is for so many. But the reason I support the spring, and the reason why I want to talk about it so much from the West Coast and traveling all over the world is, I don't want a kid to feel like he can't go achieve his dreams because he's a prisoner in his own home. As a child, where do you go when your mom, when you can't go to your dad? Where do you go when you're afraid to go to your mom because you don't want to see your mom get hurt by some news you might have for her? When I was in school, the guidance counselor, I opened up to her and I told her what was going on at home. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to run away every day. Every day I wanted to get on that Greyhound bus and just save all the money I could and have it take me wherever it went 